Welcome to Aerie Solutions channel. In today's video, I'll be presenting to us the resultants of two dimensional concurrent forces. And I'm quickly going to look at another example that involves finding the resultant of more than two concurrent forces. If you want to determine the resultant of more than two concurrent forces, we have three forces. We have the weight suspended on the pipe. Then we have two people, a man and a woman, pulling the pipe that is attached to the wall. And of course, we're going to introduce our coordinate system showing two dimensions, x direction and y direction, which are the horizontal and vertical directions respectively. Then we can quickly discover that these forces, they are all meeting at a point. So we can say they are concurrent forces. And we have a question before us. We are told that the man and the woman pulls the pipe with a force of 500 newton inclined at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal and 400 newtons inclined at an angle of 40 degrees to the vertical respectively. To illustrate this, we need a free body diagram as well. So we bring in the pipe, we take away the people, the weight and the man, we just represent them with their forces. So the man has 500 newtons inclined at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal. The woman has 400 newtons inclined at an angle of 40 degrees to the vertical. And of course, there is a weight that is 1.2 kN. And these forces can be represented quickly and easily by using what you call a particle showing all forces attached to it and their directions. Having produced the free body diagram, we're quickly going to see how this can be solved by resolving two components. But before we do that, I just quickly want to produce the polygon of forces for the diagram that is given. For this one, we have three forces. So we're going to have a polygon with three sides plus the result and making four sides. And to do that quickly, we're going to start by one of the force. So we we'll take this as the first force. Let's take this as force one. And it's 500 newton pointing in this direction. So this is 500 newtons. The next force is going to continue from where this one ends. In this case, this is the point. And of course, we can take any of them. We can take, so let's let's work with this as our force two. So starting from where the previous force ends, we quickly going to see that this is 1,200 newtons acting downwards, 1,200 newtons. Always draw to scale and with the right dimensions and duration. So we're going to continue with the third force. The third force is 400 newtons. So 400 newton force, we're going to continue for, from where this one ends and 400 newton force is acting this way. This is 400 newtons. And once this is done, to get the resultant, the resultant is going to be a closed line from where you started to where you ended. And this becomes our resultant. And this is our force polygon. And that's how you can use diagrammatic method to estimate resultant forces. However, we are quickly going to see how we can resolve these forces into components. And after doing that, we find the resultant by adding the different components together. So for this case, we have three forces. The three forces are the 500 newton force, the 400 newton force, and the suspended weight, which had 1.2 kilo newton. So we're going to start by resolving each and every one of them before we sum up. So if we start with the first case, F1 is equal to 500 newton force, inclined at an angle of 60 degrees, 60 degrees to the horizontal. And if that is the case, so we have this F1 to be equal to 500 times cos 60i is going to be positive, and we have 500 sine 60j. For this time, this case is going to be negative. And F2 will take it as the 1200 newtons, that's 1.2 kilonewtons. This one is acting downwards so the angle is making with the x axis is going to be 90 degrees so that becomes of course if you resolve to the x axis you have 1200 times cos 90 degrees i and if you resolve to the vertical axis you're going to get 1200 times sine 90 degrees 
J. And finally, the third force, which is F3, which is 400 Newton, inclined at an angle of 40 degrees, this time around, to the vertical axis. And if it's inclined to the vertical axis, we're going to have 400 times sine 40 degrees. And it's going to be negative because quickly we see that if you resolve this force to the vertical axis, it's going to point this way, which is away from the direction of the x-axis. So we're going to have negative value for the x-axis. And for the y-axis, we're going to get 400 times cos 40j. And for this case as well, we quickly discover that if you resolve this force downwards, it's going to point away from the direction of the y axis. And as a result of that, this is also negative. And our resultant, resultant is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. So to get each component of the resultant, we first look for the I component. I component will get to add this value to this value to this value. And the values are Fahrenheit for 60 quickly is 250 plus then we have 1200 times cos 90. 1200 times cos 90 is 0. So we have 0 here plus minus 400 times sine 40. And that's going to give us minus 257.11. And this is I plus, if we want to add up the Y component, we're going to add this component of F1 and this of F2 and this of F3. So, so we have minus 500 sine 30 and that will give us minus 433. Then we have minus 1200 times sine 90, we give us minus 1200. And finally, we have minus 400 times cos 40, which will give us 306.42. And this is J. And we simplify, we're going to have our resultant to be minus 7.11i minus 193.42. It's no longer new how we look for resultants. It's just same thing as 7.11 square plus 1939.42 square. And this will be equal to 1939.43 newtons. To find the direction of the resultant, let's not forget that our resultant is, is equal to minus 7.11i minus 1939.42j. So we're quickly going to just reproduce this in the coordinate form. Since it's, the, it's in minus side of the x axis and minus side of the y axis, we know that the resultant is going to be in this region. So we just draw it downwards. So these are our resultants. And if you bring in that as a triangle, such that this is our resultant, and this is our y component, and this is our s component. One can say that if we are looking for this angle, let's say it's theta, tan theta will be equal to Rx over Ry. Therefore, means that theta is equal to arctan minus 7.11 over minus 1939.42. So we have our theta to be equal to 0 0.21 degrees. And that theta that we have is the angle the resultant is making with the vertical axis. That is to say, if we have this, this is x axis, this is y axis. Our resultant is making an angle of 0 0.21 with the y axis and to find the angle is making the s axis we just add this 90 degrees to it so therefore we can say that arrow is equal to our magnitude from the previous calculations is 1939.43 newtons at an angle of 90.21 degrees to the 
or horizontal axis. And this is our final answer. Sometimes you may be required to look for an unknown force among several concurrent forces. Like the example we had earlier, you may have your weights, you may be given the forces by which um, the two people are pulling the pipe and you could be asked to look for the resultant. The other cases here that will give you resultant and ask you to look for the suspended load, the weight of the suspended load. Some other times they could give you the force of the woman, the weight of the suspended load, the reactions in the pipe and ask you to look for the force with which the man is pulling the pipe. Some other times they may give you specific angles and like ask you to look for angles of something else maybe the the angle that the force with which the man is pulling the pipe makes with the horizontal so these are different scenarios that may occur like this is one example we may have for this figure shown the man pulls the pipe with a force of 1500 newtons inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal then the lady pulls the same pipe with an unknown force inclined at an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal Given that the weight of the suspended load is 2.2 kN, determine the value of a singular force acting vertically upwards that could be used to replace all the forces and weights on the pipe and the force with which the lady pulls the pipe. So we ask to look for two things. First, we ask to determine the value of a singular force that can be used to represent all other forces together and the force must be acting vertically upwards. And for that condition to hold, what value of force will the woman be using to pull the pipe? Regardless of how the question is coming, the same procedure should be followed. The first thing is to produce the free body diagram. So for this case, we have the man exerting a force of 1.5 kN on the pipe at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal. Then we have the woman exerting an unknown force, which is what we are looking for. But we are told the force is at a 40 degrees angle to the horizontal. Then we are told that the weight of the object that is on the pipe is 2.2 kN. Then we are asked to find one singular force that will act vertically, that will produce the same effects. And what value of force will the, will the woman contribute that will make this force to remain so, acting vertically and still give you the same effects? So we have our free body diagram and we are going to progress from there. So to solve this problem, we are going to follow the same procedure and work it out step wisely and try to simplify it as much as possible. And the best way that this kind of problem can be approached is to resolve all of the forces into their respective components and add them up to get their resultants. Eventually, that will result in a number of simultaneous equations that could be equal to the number of unknowns. And you can solve your simultaneous equations, and once that is done, you get your answer. We start by resolving the first force, which is the 1500 Newton. The first force before us is 1500 Newton F1, which is at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal axis. And when resolved into components, is equal to 1,500 times cos 60i and minus 1,500 sine 60j. And this will be equal to 750i minus 1299j. Let's take our weights which is 2.2 kN as our second force that we're taking this as our second force F2 is equal to 2.2 kN which is 2200 newtons acting downwards that means it's making an angle of 90 degree with the horizontal and if we resolve that we're going to have plus 2200 times cos 90i and if we resolve it to the vertical axis, we're going to have minus 2200 sine 90j. And that will be equal to 0 i minus 
2200J. And if we do same for the third force, the force of the lady F3 to be equal to, so we to put F lady, let's just put FL. FL is making an, an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal. So that is to say, F lady is equal to FL times cos 50 degrees I. This time around is going to be negative here minus F lady times sine 50 degrees J. And this quickly is going to be F minus F cos 50 I minus F sine 50 J. And finally, our resistance is acting upwards in the vertical axis according to the question that means it's making an angle of 90 degrees with the horizontal so that is to say resultant is equal to r cos 90i plus r sine 90j and this will give us 0i plus rg normally our resultant is the sum of all the forces that are acting on the system that is to say if we add up all the i components 750i 0i and minus f cos 50 we are going to get 0 which is the resultant so therefore 0 is equal to 750i plus 0 minus f cos 50i and we can simplify further to say that 750 minus f cos 50 is equal to 0 and we can call this equation 1 and if we sum up all y components as well, minus 1299j, minus 2200j, minus f sin 50, they will be equal to the component of the resultant force in the vertical axis. So R is equal to minus 1299j minus 2200 minus f sine 50 and we can say this is equation 2 now we have two unknowns we have f is not known and r is not known we can easily find f from equation 1 minus 750 is equal to f minus f cos 50 and this implies that f is equal to 750 divided by cos 50 and that will give us our value of f to be 1166.79 newtons having gotten the value of f we can put in the value of f into equation 2 to get the resultant resultant r Will be, will be equal to minus 1299 minus 2200 minus 1166.79 times sine 50. The value of resultant will be minus 4392 newtons. So we have our value for resultant and we have our value for value for the force with which the lady is pulling the pipe. This will be all for now. I sincerely do hope you found the video helpful.